Hello everybody, 811913 here. Today we are going to talk about lists. I wanted to start this video with the following question. Who invented the concept of lists? I looked all over Google, but I found no clear answer of the first use of the list. What I got was mostly list of inventors, which also none of them included who invented the list. Pretty disappointed, I went to look for the broad definition of the term, and what I got was an ordered linear collection of elements which is a great start compared to what I found before. So following that definition, I established that the first list human used were the natural numbers, or the counting numbers. But as obsessive compulsive humans we are, we didn't stop listing things there. This new concept proved to be handy for thousands of things. We could create lists of ingredients, lists of things we owned, lists of animal species, and ever since, we have just keep listing everything. Google results come up as a list, ordered by relevance, and many cl classes keep up a list of students by numerical or order. So it seems natural that as computers began to dawn, they would do so along alongside the computerized list, and in a sort of sense, they did. However, the list the computer used was kind of different from the one we used. First of all, it wasn't even called a list. It was just the computer's memory, an ordered and linear set of data. But as computer grew more pure and more powerful, so did the problems we were trying to solve. We began to ponder if it would be possible to make the computer think just as we do, to emulate the, com the human brain, the holy grail of computing. And it is very impressive that one of the first steps we took towards trying to solve this problem was creating something that we knew from millions of years ago, the list. Just this time, we adapted it into something the computer would understand. This brought the invention of the linked list in 1955, when Alan Newell, Cliff Shaw, and Herbert Simon at Rand Corporation were trying to implement the first artificial intelligent systems. The linked list was the primary data structure for their information processing language, which only task was, was to solve artificial intelligence problems. However, their groundbreaking invention proved to be so useful it quickly echoed within the whole computer science community, and it won them the ACM Turing Award in 1975, which was 20 years later. But hey, better late than never. Your definition of the linked list was nothing hard to grasp either. The implementation consists of another basic data structure called the node. A node is composed of a data field and a pointer field. The pointer field points to the next node in the list, and so on, and so on. Thus, it is a recursive data structure. The flexibility granted by this definition leaves us plenty of room to experiment with list type structures. However, for the sake of demonstration, we will see the three most common types of lists. The linked list, the circular list, and the doubly linked list. For each of these lists, we will see its corresponding construction and algorithms plus some comparisons to other data structures. In this part of the video, we will do an extensive use of pointers, so if you don't recall all the inner details of this topic, I would recommend watching the previous seminars in order to refresh your memory. Now, before we can start working with these themselves, we have to come up to grips with its main component, the node. As mentioned before, the node is a data structure that consists of a data field and a pointer field. In this case, the pointer field indicates where is the next node. With this definition in mind, let's declare our node data structure. We are now ready to implement our list, which is even simpler now that we have our node declared. Now, from this code, we can see some clear differences with the array. First of all, lists are in clustered in the together in main memory. This means that lists are not necessarily in contiguous memory locations while arrays are. The next important difference is that lists have no indexes. That means that random access is not, is not possible on lists and that each node may differ in size, 
while all array locations share the same size. And the most important of all is that lists do not have a static size. They are a dynamic data structure, and thus we can use as much spa space as we need without having to change our code. This is extremely handy in situations where we can't know for sure how many space we will need. With this in mind, let's see the implementation of the circular list, which is really just a special case of the linked list, where the last node of the list points to the first one. Finally, let's see how to build the doubly linked list. For this kind of list, we will need a new kind of node, one that can reference not only to succeeding node, but also its predecessor. Now, these are all very basic examples, but as you can see, there's plenty of room to experiment. Once we get to the algorithms that handle this list, we'll see some of these variations. First, we will see the most basic ways in which you can add, delete, search and sort lists and build up more elaborate solutions as we approach the end of the video. All code samples and references will be included on the course platform and on the downloadable zip file for further reviewing. I forgot to mention another vital aspect of lists, which is list traversal. List traversal will come handy to visualize the elements that, that, that are in our list and also to treat the recursive nature of these structures. Here we can see an example of list traversal for linked lists. For a circular list, we will have to modify our code a little in order to avoid infinite loops. We achieve this by keeping a pointer handle to the first node of the list and check inside the loop if we are again at the first element. Traversing a doubly linked list in order is identical to traversing a normal linked list. However, thanks to the extra pointer that indicates the preceding node, we can also traverse the list in reverse. The reverse traversal, however, requires that we keep a pointer that let us handle the last element of the list, as we can see in the code example. These, tra these traversal algorithms are very basic and easy, but we always have to be careful to look out for null values since all of our list elements are handled by pointers. For the next examples, we'll be adding nodes to our different types of lists using different techniques depending on the situation. First, we will see adding and deletion of sor on sorted linked lists with the following values. Here, we are going to use an already sorted list for the sake of demonstration. However, core aspects of the insertion algorithm will stay the same. Before seeing the code example, we can briefly summarize the insertion algorithms of the following. Finding where we want to place the node. This may change depending on the situation. And then inserting the node, which is similar steps. I said inserting between apostrophes because more than inserting the node into the list, we are going to handle pointers so our new element becomes part of the list. Now, taking back our sorted link list, we will want to insert the node with the value 9 into the list, but we want to keep the list sorted. Therefore, we will have to traverse the list 
find where the nodes should go, and finally add the new node into the list. If our link list was instead circular, the only thing we will have to change will be the while loop to check if we've been already at the first node. And finally, our node insertion code stays almost the same when it comes to our doubly linked list. However, since the list is already sorted and has pointers that let us traverse it in any order, we can do some calculations to see if our new node is either closer to the head or tail of the list. As we can see, the method for inserting a node into any part in a list can be summed up into the following points. First, make the new node point toward the value the current node in the while loop is pointing to, and make the current node in the while loop point towards the new node. If the list is doubly linked, we just have to make sure the pointer of the new node that points back does so at the current node in the while loop. Now that we know how to add new nodes into our list, we will see how to delete them. In the previous part of the video, we looked at some ways in which you can add nodes to your lists. We will now look at how to delete nodes from lists. Adding and deleting elements from lists is very similar, since what we all, all we are doing basically is handling pointers in a while loop, so we just have to delete one part of our loop in order to make it delete nodes. However, we have to be very caref careful to free the pointers once we are no longer using them in order to avoid memory leaks. We will keep using the sorted list we used in the previous examples. Now we will delete the node we added in the last part of the video with the node value 1. It is very important to always make another node keep handle of the rest of the list before deleting the node in question. Otherwise, you will be deleting, deleting the only node that hey, has access to the handle of the rest of the list and won't be out. able to get yes, that information that's back. What's the big deal? Just poke a hole in The circular list it. only includes some modifications sure, to check that we haven't been the first node already. But then it seems impossible. You're right. You cannot do it with an ordinary sphere, like a basketball. You have to understand the rules of the game. This sphere is made of an abstract elastic material that can stretch and bend and pass through itself. But you cannot rip or puncture this material without destroying it. And you cannot crease it or bend it sharply. Well, in the if doubly the linked can list, we can use itself. the last trick from, from, from before Do to delete it in normal or reverse order. Easy? Try it. I'll push the two halves right through each other. 
Be careful. What about that ring around the equator? Remember, you mustn't tear or crease it. Ah, uh, let me try again. That's no good either. You're pinching it infinitely tight. But then there's no way. It's impossible. You'd have to crease or pinch it to turn it inside out. Due to the inefficient nature of list traversal, surprising. sorting algorithms for this. list are particularly weak. However, some clever solutions can be found involving merge it? sorts. Is this a sphere? Before Turn seeing the more out? complicated sorting oh, algorithms, we will see the most That's... naive one first, the bubble sort, which in its average and worst case scenario sorts the a data structure in big O N
port comparisons. As before, this code must be adjusted for circular lists. With this, we have covered the most basic aspects of this and we can close this video right now. However, we will... Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're going to learn about insertion sort in a linked list. So, um, you might probably know what an insertion sort is and how to make a linked list. Now we're going to combine those two concepts and apply insertion sort to a linked list. And this is a, a pretty simple algorithm. It is not very difficult. If you know how to do insertion sort in an array, this is very trivial. But I still want to cover this as, you know, it's, it's nice to know. So, okay, I'll show you the slideshow of how it works. All the prerequisites for this video are obviously you knowing how to make a linked list and um, you basically um, knowing what insertion sort is. We'll see the code after we see the, the you know, the, the slideshow and I'll show you how the code works and explain line by line. So let's get on to the slideshow. So here I have two pointers. There is current and there is a, a pointer called insertion pointer. Now the insertion pointer starts from the head and goes one before the current and the current basically goes through the entire list one at a time, one element at a time at first. So first uh, current and insertion pointer are pointing to the same element that is the head. In this case the head is four. Next what happens is I initially increment current by one which means I make current point to three and the insertion pointer is pointing to the head. Now immediately after this happens, I start my conditional checking. I check, is 4 greater than 3? Well, it is. And if it is, I need to swap it. Now I check again, is 3 greater than 4? Well, it is not. So I have to move further. So what I do is I increment current by 1, but insertion pointer remains at the head because I don't need to change it right now. But you'll see how it is changing as we go through the slides. So right now I'm checking the insertion pointer data with the current pointer data. So the insertion pointer asks, is three greater than one? Well, as you know, it obviously is. So I have to swap the values. Now it asks again, is one greater than three? Well, it's not. So there is no reason to swap any of it, as you can see over here. Next, we increment the insertion pointer by one and we bring it to four. And we're like, hey, is four greater than three? Well, it is, and it has to be because that's pure mathematics, and then we swap it. And now that that is swapped, we check again, is three greater than four? Well, it's not. So we increment the current pointer by one, that is we move to the next uh, linked list pointer, a linked list uh, memory location, and we reset the head, uh, sorry, reset the insertion pointer to point to the head. And then we check again, is one greater than five? Well, unfortunately it is not. So it moves to the next element in the linked list. Now is three greater than five? No, it's not. No, four is not. And then we move the current to seven and we move the pointer, that is the insertion pointer to the head. And then we repeat the same process again, moving through the entire list, checking if we can fit seven anywhere in here but we can't because seven is the largest element in the list and we just checked it that is how this entire thing works and if you thought because this is a linked list it will work any differently than it works in an array well you were wrong and it works the same so yeah let's look at the code now and uh, get over with this so in our code this is our main function and our main function basically has the housekeeping stuff to make a linked list the pushing functions and the printing list function which takes the head of the linked list. The global head is a head which I declared and I call it global head because well it is global so I can access it from any function I want and then I am calling the insertion sort function and passing the global head. Here I'm passing the global head in order to just make the, the, the function more versatile so that you know it works for multiple occasions. Let's go see where this function is. So here is the insertion sort function and uh, okay cute is getting weird. Uh, so here I say void insertion sort node pointer current. So initially I passed in the head and so I'm referencing the head by the current pointer and this is just a node pointer which means that it is a type def which doesn't mean it's a type def I just defined it as a type def. Uh, here you have uh, so the, the point of this is wherever you see node pointer just replace it with 
this uh, don't replace it right now just it, it is replaced by the compiler so do, you don't have to worry about it this is what it is replaced by okay so yeah so this is basically a, a pointer which points to a certain memory location of the node which we declared this is the node in data and pointer next so that's about it so in the first few lines all I'm doing is I am saying that there is some memory location and the memory location is obviously the head of the pointer or head of the link list sorry and the head the insertion pointer and current pointers are pointing to that particular location which is basically the head of the link list and then I do something which you saw in the PPT in the presentation in which I, I move the current pointer to the next element in the link list so it's not pointing to the head anymore it's pointing to the next element which is besides the head the head dot next or if, if, if you can understand that um, and then I basically go while a current is not equal to null because as you know in the link list we check if the next value is null so that we can move there or you know check conditions so that we don't fall into a segmentation fault um, if you have ever experienced a segmentation fault it basically means that or a core dump error you, it basically means that you're trying to access information or access memory locations which are not you know which you don't own basically which you didn't create here we have the insertion pointer and we point it to the head as you saw in the presentation it always starts pointing to the head and then it goes through the list checking if the conditions are satisfied so here I'm checking while the insertion pointer is not equal to current well there is a, a flip side to this you can even check while it next while the insertion pointer of next is not equal to current you know why? Because as you see, as you go through the presentation, you are moving over here and you check, okay, next is current, right? So we're like, okay, next is current. So I don't want to do anything. I'll just, you know, reset my entire position and I'll come back here. So that's what is exactly happening here. You point to the, you, you check if the next is current. And if it is, you, you know, you revert back to insertion equal to insertion point equal to head after current is in incremented to the next element the link list so here you're checking the the, the the data values over here so insertion pointer of data if it's greater than the current pointer of data then you swap the values and then you check one more time so one when you swap the values what basically happens is you check the condition one more time this thing is incremented until you get to the point where you know it is checked again and if there are more values which are greater than it then it gets swapped again so it's basically an incremental swapping and you know so that's basically it in the entire tutorial i know this was kind of a pointless tutorial and um, for completeness basically so if you enjoyed this you probably didn't but like share and subscribe if you enjoyed this and if you didn't well still do that because i i need some motivation so thanks for watching later